Today's video is a little bit different, but I figured I'd make it just because it might help some of you guys out. I'm gonna be taking this old cooler and turning it into a live well. I need a live well, well, I don't need one, but I would like to have a backup live well for not only my big boat, but for my John boat. You know, the boat that I have, it does have a dual live well system. I have a live well in the back of the boat and a live well in the front of the boat. I don't trust them. They, they're kind of weird the way that they're set up. Anytime I put fish in them, they've randomly drained because the overflow plug comes out from the fish swimming around in there and stuff. It's, it's a fish and ski boat, it's not a bass boat. So I've had more problems than I'd like to have with my current live well situation. So the best thing I thought I could do was just make my own. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm doing today. This is the first time that I'm doing it. It's pretty easy, it doesn't seem that hard. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it, just in case you guys wanna do it yourself. And uh, you know, I'm starting off with a cooler that I already had. You guys, if you go buy one, that's fine too. We gotta run to the hardware store, grab a few minor items that are gonna help get this done today. And then we're gonna come back here and I'm gonna show you guys everything that I'm using and exactly how I'm gonna put it together. Let's go to the hardware store. All right, folks, bag acquired. I ended up spending $18. I'll show you exactly what I bought now, taking consideration the entire total of what we're doing today isn't going to be the same because I had some things at home already, but. All right, so I'm gonna try and do this in my living room. There's not too much space and uh, just ignore the mess in the background. Yes, there is a ping pong table in my living room. Don't ask me and my roommates. We like to play ping pong. I'm gonna use it as a table though, out here in front of me. I have quite a few items. Not everything here is necessary, but if you wanna do it the right way, this is the way I'm going about doing it. So to show you guys everything that you need to get this project done, first you need a cooler and these tools right here. These tools consist of a drill. I have some uh, wire strippers, it's basically a little terminal set, like stripper, cramper, crimper set. I have some drill bits. A battery, this battery I bought on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I have a small bilge pump, this one I got from Walmart. It's an 800 gallon per hour. I have a switch right here. This little pipe elbow, if you guys can see it better, right here. I have some pipe supporters or pipe brackets, whatever you may call them. Some little screws, Velcro tape, and that's about it. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try and do this to the best of my ability in my living room. This cooler is definitely gonna need some TLC, like new hinges and stuff like that. But the reason I'm choosing to use it is one, it's big, and two, it's really not being used for anything. So I'm taking advantage of using something that I probably wouldn't use it elsewhere just because it's about had it for using it for what it's made for. So Oh wow, that's loud. Sounds just like a cooler. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing here is installing this bilge pump inside this cooler and I'm gonna try and navigate the tubing so that it runs along the inside and just works like a fountain. So the point of having this is for your aeration system. There's other ways you can do this. You guys can buy a battery powered bubbler and stuff like that, but having a heavy water flow is probably one of the best ways that you're going to be able to do this. Now I'm not doing any kind of filtration system. Obviously if I have fish in here during a tournament or something like that, I'm going to have to change the water out with a bucket. I'm gonna have to add water with the bucket. So first step here is to install the pump and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take this pump right here and the goal is to install it basically in the corner right here. And then we're gonna run this hose all the way along the bottom and it's going to spout like right here. And the water is gonna shoot out of the hose down here. The first thing I did was I put Velcro on the bottom of this so that I can fasten it down in here. I know what you're thinking, Velcro, is not gonna hold underwater. The reason I chose Velcro, because I wanna be able to use this bilge pump. It'd be really nice to be able to rig this thing up so I can just rip the pump out in an emergency situation, transfer it over to the boat, and start pumping water out of the boat instead of within the live well. So that's the reason that I use the Velcro, but in case you guys are curious, I used this Velcro right here. It's Velcro tape that is rated up to 15 pounds of pressure, 
and it's outdoor rated. It's made to be outside in the elements. So it should work even though it will be underwater a lot. Now the next step we have to do is route this hose. Now the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just gonna leave the hose at the bottom and I got this like elbow joint right here and I bought three quarter inch pipe brackets so that I can essentially screw this guy in like this right here. What I'm gonna do is use this as like the water spout so the water doesn't go all crazy, the hose doesn't move around. So that's what's next and I'll show you guys that as soon as I get it done. Alrighty, so I didn't quite get the full bilge pump in there yet, but I just want to show you guys this really quick to show you what I did here. So I installed this elbow bracket again. I'm going to call it like a spout and elbow bracket. At least that's what the intention is for. I don't know if that's the right technical term. I apologize if that's not it. But if you guys can see right here, there's the handle and there's screws in the handle. So because there's screws at that point, I figured what does it hurt to put more screws in? Plus this only needs to hold so much water. It doesn't need to be filled up to the tippy top. So what I did was I stayed in the same place where kind of the screws were before, but I didn't put screws completely through it. I pretty much just put a screw in the beginning lining. So if you guys can see right here, you can see that I have the, the pipe support holding this piece in. I don't know if you guys paid attention, but I drilled small pilot holes prior to putting the big screws in. I took a little drill bit like this and it's always good to drill a pilot hole first because that way you're not gonna crack the plastic and you kind of get a little spot for your screw to fit in. And then the other thing I want you guys to notice that I did was I put the screws in by hand. You never really wanna take a drill and kind of torque stuff in there when you're just trying to get it fitted in there. This doesn't need to be super secure. It just needs to hold that pipe so that I have water to exit through it. I'm not trying to damage the hole inside of the cooler. So that's very important. Drill your hole, put the screw in by hand. This isn't something that needs to be torqued down in there. It just needs to hang tight there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bilge pump back in and we're gonna run the hose all the way to that pipe. All right, so for the most part, it's pretty much installed. So as you guys can see right here, we got the bilge pump with the Velcro down there. Then we have the pipe that leads all the way down and then we have it just routing up through here. So it's gonna come up through here, come down and then exit right here. So that's gonna be your oxygen flow. So that should be good. Now we need to figure out the whole power situation with the bilge pump. How are we gonna get it to work? That's where the battery's gonna come in. So we have to get this switch wired into the battery and we're gonna do that right now. So it is actually the next day. I had to run to the hardware store and get a couple more connectors to do the electrical because I ended up not having enough. The original plan I had to wire this up completely changed in the midst of doing this. So we're just gonna go ahead and show you exactly what I did. I'm really happy with the turnout. This thing is completely done. And I hope if you guys wanna recreate this, you'll be able to. It's honestly pretty simple. Yes, this setup might be a little more pricey than others, but take this idea, mod it the way that you want. Let's check it out. I'll show you guys exactly what I did here. So what I ended up doing with the wiring situation is I wired everything up to a little 12 volt battery. Now, if you're looking to use this for your like in boat live well, like if you're gonna start fishing tournaments and you need a live well like this or something, I would recommend getting a way bigger battery, but I'm just using this battery to show you guys like for the purpose of transporting fish and for it to work. So I actually have this set up so that I can use it with different batteries. The one in this video is just, it's just the easiest way to show you guys. I, I didn't tuck anything away. I didn't hide anything yet because I want you guys to be able to see it. But right here we have our small 12 volt battery. This battery is a common battery that you guys will find for like, I don't know, like mopeds or if you ice fish for your flasher, 
kids toys things like that it's just a common small battery i don't know exactly how much output i'll get for this particular thing but i'd imagine if i was transporting fish from a pond to another pond i'd get you know plenty plenty of power but here we go so as you guys can see there's a bunch of wiring nonsense right here the bilge pump had three wires to it it had a positive a negative and i'm not crazy with electrical but i'm going to say this is like a constant so essentially if you have the red and black wire hooked up to the battery it would only work with the safety sensor that's inside the bilge pump this specific bilge pump once water hits a specific spot on it, it will automatically kick on so long as there's some kind of power connected to it. But if you wanted to have consistent power to be able to control turning it on or turning it off, I basically had to splice in this constant wire. So, so what you guys see here is you see three wires. I have a negative going direct to the battery and then spliced it off to the switch right here. And then I have the red wire, the positive, going directly to the switch but from the red wire i spliced the constant so basically we have one running direct from the switch to power it and then we have the main that goes to the bilge pump spliced in to the positive wire so this is what's giving us our positive power this is what's giving us our negative and this is what's controlling the switch from what you guys can see is we got this little switch right here if you flip it, boom. So as you guys can see, it works really great. We have a lot of flow coming out of there. All in all, if you were to buy this straight up, like straight out of the pocket with a cooler, all the pieces for it, you're probably looking at like a hundred bucks. I know that's kind of pricey, but again, you guys don't have to do it this way. I just wanted the most legit way possible because there is a good chance I'm gonna fish some tournaments this year in the John boat at some of these smaller lakes and my John boat does not have a live well in it. That's it guys, easy, it's really not that hard. I'm not a crazy DIY guy. I take up projects by myself every once in a while and uh, you know, the wiring thing, if you don't know what you're doing, ask a friend. I did have a little bit of insight from a buddy on this just to make sure I was doing this correctly because again, I really don't know that much of what I'm doing. I usually just watch videos like this on YouTube. If you guys are curious how I mounted this battery, by the way, I literally used uh, Velcro. That's not a permanent fix. It's just for now. Uh, again, if I'm transporting fish or whatever with this small battery, uh, this Velcro holds up to uh, 15 pounds. So it's actually really solid on there. Like the odds of that actually coming off are pretty slim, but if you're driving around in a boat and stuff like that, I wouldn't leave a battery just dangling there. Other than this, basically all I have to do from here on out is get some new hinges for this uh, cooler because it's kind of junk for the most part, but it's completely leak free. I didn't put any holes in it. And then these wires gotta be cleaned up. You know, the goal is to get some kind of box, clean all this stuff up and then secure the switch. But yeah, it's pretty sweet, pretty simple. Right at the flip of the switch. And uh, as you guys can see here, again, I just have the bilge pump down here. I actually ended up using uh, the piece that I cut off, if you guys can see this right here. That was the leftover hose from what I cut off, so I just used it to kind of like protect and or waterproof the main wire, but for the most part, everything else should be solid. So that's it. We're gonna put that to use this year. Figured if I'm gonna make it, I might as well show you guys. With that being said, I think we're gonna try and get out and finally fish the weather. Look at it, it's finally beautiful outside. No more snow, no more ice, just a little bit of flooding. So things should be changing here soon. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, do me a favor, smash the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.